morning. It's day three. No, it's not. It's day two. Let's wake up, Steve. Day three. Well, whatever. Anyway, I'm here with uh, I'm here with Fee and Chucko again. Hi guys. We're here at breakfast at the coffee station, which is uh, effectively over the open venue. So we're uh, we're gonna choose some sort of a breakfast smoothie. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. We'll get some sort of drinks and food and wake up juice. Uh, coffee, basically, for those people who don't know what wake up juice is. Um, we'll rock up tomorrow. I'll put the picture of the table up. You can see where we're currently standing. We're like eight VPs behind first and about eight VPs ahead of third. So we're comfortably second at the moment. We're going to play third at some point today. Um, uh, so today we've got Nettleton and Barton and Hutton. So you can see those teams and where they are. And we're going to play today. I'm probably set out for the first set. In fact, I might sit out for most of the day again. I'm just here for people if they feel tired. Uh, or for whatever reason, so um, I'll give you hands still because people, teammates, do play good hands, and so you'll see occasionally the odd hands that Chucker plays well, if you can ever find one. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, or bid well or something like that. So there's some hands coming today, hopefully, and um, the Premier League's a long event, so we're this will be a third of the way through at the end of today, and then there'll be two more weekends coming, uh, one in Coventry and one in Spondon. So the Spondon one I'll be staying in Nottingham for, and the Coventry one I think we'll be staying in. The lovely-ish city of Coventry. Uh, not so nice for my personally. I think there were better places to play bridge, but uh, yeah. So good luck today, team. Woo! Breakfast. What do we think? Good. Look at that. That's a Mediterranean breakfast. Fee had banana loaf. We've had some lovely smoothies, and I've got what I thought was a small little eggs Benedict, a couple of eggs and some things. And look at the size of that. So we've now got our new favourite breakfast place in London. It's called the Coffee Station. So if you are playing the Premier League on a different weekend, come to the coffee station, it's just over the road from the venue. So young Chelsea has a Ukraine flag, support Ukraine, obviously, in these trying times, so well done them. Uh, we're now playing a game, oh okay, so Chuck has just pointed out, all those pictures on the wall are for sale for support for Ukraine, so uh, well done young Chelsea. Um, uh, we're now playing a game of what time does Ali rock up? Uh, Chucker is guessing two minutes before start time. Oh, he said he's five minutes away with six minutes to go. So, uh, yeah, so we'll try and introduce you to Ali because we didn't really get to see him yesterday. And Liam, don't know if they're coming together, but they're playing together today. We're playing Nettleton first, Nettleton a third. Uh, we're second, so. Um, and we're only actually six behind the leaders, so today we are uh, playing Nettleton, and then we're playing two teams who are slightly below average. Um, so we'll do our best today. Uh, uh, waiting for some hands. I'm almost certainly sat out the first match now, so it is what it is. Uh, next weekend, uh, Cooper and I will be playing throughout, so there'll be a lot more um, first hand bridge problems. So. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll introduce you to Ali when he arrives. He is our team leader, uh, captain of Team Phoenix. Uh, captain in name, Chucker does all the actual admin, and uh, he says laughing. Um, but yeah, so we, he'll be here in a few minutes. Fingers crossed that he arrives on time. Um, but yeah. Uh, so with two boards to go, we're about 20 imps down. It was like 34 to 14 or something like that. Um, you pick up ace king queen ten, king third, uh, two low, jack to four, and you're second to speak, and uh, everyone's vulnerable. And he goes, uh, you've got two decisions on this hand. The first decision is if the hand on your right opens one heart, what do you do? Um, I think you've got three options. You could pass, you could do a takeout double to show four spades, or you could overcall a spade. Um, I think there's a, there's a difference of opinion in uh, our team. I would overcall spades. Someone else thinks doubles better, and someone else thinks passes better. The person who held this hand passed, um, and then the second decision comes later. So it goes one heart, you pass. Uh, the next hand bids two hearts, and your partner wanders in with three diamonds, vulnerable against you know red all, and it comes back to you. Well, what are your options now? And you have a heart stop. Um, but 3N, it's getting very loud in here, apologies, but 3N is uh, uh, risky. Like, you'll need partner's diamonds to be running, potentially, or something like that. So, 
but three hearts puts them into a corner what do you do do you think you've got five diamonds on I don't know maybe um, if partner's got a stiff heart and the club values maybe five diamonds is there when his diamonds aren't running so I don't know what the right bid on this hand is um, do you just bid 3N and hope it makes? Do you bid 3 hearts? Partner's never going to be able to bid 3N, like with Queen X of hearts or something. Maybe they have that. Maybe they've got Ace X of hearts. So when 3N's easy and good, if you bid 3 hearts and partner's got this heart stop, they'll bid 3N. But when 3N's making and partner hasn't got a heart stop, you need to be bidding it. There's no way, realistically, partner's going to have spades here. Um, so if you bid four, three hearts, most of the time partner's bidding four diamonds, and then what are you doing? Um, so I sympathise I would have been 3-2 n I think um, and it doesn't make and 5 diamonds does so that you can see the whole hand um, I don't know what happens if you ever call a spade to start with, partner doesn't get enthused partner might still bid 3 diamonds and then you might still bid 3-N with this heart stop maybe or pass any diamonds I don't know, um, but 3-N's only one off but because 5 diamonds is making we actually lost 11 imps on the board so that was one of the early boards in the set uh, two difficult decisions, I think, or uh, decisions that aren't unanimous if you ask it's, uh, you know, a group of experts. So just one of those hands. All right, here we are. Um, we haven't met him so far because he's been not late. I, not late, but he's been here a minute before the start time. Both time. This is Ali Ahmed. How are you doing, Ali? Hello. How are you finding Life Bridge again? It's good. Oh, I miss Bridge, man. I really miss Bridge. Yeah. So Ali's played a bit online. He hasn't played live for uh, about a year. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, the last last year's Premier League and he's playing with Liam today they've played every set so far uh, he's had some good sets today and not started off so well I think mistakes were made at both tables but we're not lost by too much and we're still in with it so match number two is against uh, Barden I think we're playing Barden's team and they're, uh, they're struggling at the moment so this might be a chance to get a win straight back on the board um, we're just going for a wander we've got like a 20 minute break so maybe we're going to get a coffee or something yeah let's do it yeah, yeah so, so wait for Liam we're going to wander for the coffee shop a different coffee shop to where breakfast at um, and then we'll be back to play Barden uh, so there's another hand from the first set um, where uh, you're in 3N with the following hand so you've got the uh, singleton heart and they lead the 3 of hearts at trick 1 against your 3N I don't know what the bidding was but I don't think uh the opponent's bid and you need to decide what to do so we'll just have a quick an analysis of the hand so obviously they've led a heart they've led the three they play fourth and second or second and fourth so the three of hearts is the smallest heart you can see so hearts are going to be four four which is good news um you've got king queen to four opposite singleton so obviously if the ace is offside you might be in a bit of trouble um uh, and you've got jack ten to four space opposite ace queen one King Jack tight of diamonds opposite ace nine eight to five and ace king x of clubs opposite four low. So if you have a quick count of your tricks, you can always make three spades, you can always make one heart, that's four, you can always make two diamonds, that's six, and you can always make two clubs, that's eight. So it looks like you've always got eight tricks. And there are some possibilities for nine. Um the ace of hearts on side means they if they set up their hearts they're going to give you two which will be your ninth trick so if the ace hearts on side they're playing the king um a trick one means they can't really attack hearts uh, which is good uh diamonds might be three three or the queen of diamonds might be on side there's some extra chances in diamonds or you might have king x of spades or king third of spade on side in which case you can make four spade tricks so there's loads of opportunities to make nine However, is there anything? Is there any consideration to playing low at trick one? They've led the three of hearts. If your king loses to the ace and they clear the heart, there's a limit to how many things you can do, um, I guess. So imagine if the key, so imagine if you play the king of hearts at trick one, and it loses to the ace and they play a heart back. So obviously they've set themselves three heart tricks up as well as. Uh, um, but they've got no guaranteed entry but, but I mean hearts are 4-4 four, four, so whichever hand wins is going, going to go there so if they set the hearts up what are your chances now well if the king x of spades or king to three spades is on side you can still make four spades one heart is five two diamonds and two clubs is nine so if the ace of hearts is offside you can still make it if king x or king third of spades is on side if, you, if the spade finesse loses you now need to establish a diamond trick I guess so you need maybe maybe if you uh, win the heart return and, and take a spade finesse and it loses and they clash the hearts and when you win you just need to play a diamond to the jack but entries are a bit difficult you might not be able to get back to your diamonds um, 
So anyway, the t our teammate um, played a low heart at trick one, playing for the ace to be offside, and so obviously this this stops them setting their heart tricks up um, when the ace is offside, and potentially gives you time to mess about in diamonds and spades to set them up. The problem with this is, if the ace of hearts is onside, you've just made it difficult for yourself. If the ace of hearts is onside, you're almost certain to make this. And so when you play low at trick one, you're basically taking a big view about where the location of the ace of hearts is. You're basically taking a view. Now, obviously, if the ace of hearts is offside, you might give yourself time and a favorable diamond position or something like that, where maybe the, the queen the queen or, the queen or ten falls doubleton, so your nine eight become play, or you cross to your queen of spades and the queen of diamonds is on side, or something like that. So you're in really favourable positions. But, um, but obviously, when the ace of is on side, you might go off in this. They can switch to, for example, clubs. So if you go heart trick one, you play low and they win, and the aces was on side, they can attack clubs now. Now, when the king of spades is offside, they can clear the clubs with the ace of hearts as an entry. So it's a bit of a view to do that. Um, whether it be right or not, I don't know. I think it's probably just right to play the King of Hearts because if it holds, you're pretty safe. It's almost, you know, if the, if the Ace of Hearts is on side, they're just not getting five tricks, I don't think, uh, without you having time to set up your tricks. Uh, realistically, there might be layouts where you can't make it when the Ace is on side, but playing playing low at trick one, I think it's a bit of a mistake. We sadly lost uh, 11 imps on the board. Um, but maybe it's one of those table presence fields. Maybe, you know, and I, I am one of those people who, uh, if you have a read of the table, you should be able to follow it through. Um, and if the read isn't clear, you should play with the odds. But when the read is clear, trust your gut. You won't, you won't ever know. Um, you won't ever know if your reads are right if you don't try and follow them sometimes. But on this particular case, I think the odds, the odds favor playing the King of Hearts. Um, and sadly, we lost 11 imps on the board. Uh, so, not doing so well. This is match two of the day uh, against Barden. And we're, with one board to come in, uh, we're 40 odd imps down. So it's like an 18 2 loss or worse. And just as an interesting point again, um, I think it's fairly obvious, and Fee and Chuck, I think it's fairly obvious, but obviously, it's not happening at many tables at all you pick up this hand it was the east hand at the time you've got three low queen 10x ace queen jack to six and a singleton club i think it might be singleton queen of clubs it was um and you're fourth to speak and it goes um one heart on your left partner jumps to two spades apologies it goes one club on your left partner jumps to two spades weak and this goes pass. So you've got this three, three, six, one hand, the singleton club. And obviously partner's got a weak hand. You haven't got an opening hand, and the hand on your right's pass. Where are the you know, where are the hearts? Maybe partner might not preempt with hearts, so maybe the hand on your left is like strong with hearts and clubs or something like that. So a lot of the people would just bid three spades with this hand or something like that, but the person against Chuck and Free made a great bit of three diamonds, which should show spade tolerance here. You can tolerate partner spades and you're competing. Uh, if you had a good hand, you might bid three clubs or you might just bid game. So three diamonds is sort of lead directional in case partner ends up on lead against four clubs or five clubs or something like that. Um, and this is going to be a great bid. I think it's good. And then uh, this went three hearts on your left. So obviously the hand on your left is distribution with hearts and clubs. Your partner bids four diamonds. It goes four hearts on your right, so you bid four spades. You now know you've got like two nine card fits. It looks like a double fit all round. And it forces them to five hearts. They made a forcing pass, bid five hearts. Um, and your partner leads a diamond. And if you look at the full hand, a diamond lead is needed to beat it because you've got the ace of diamonds is guaranteed. You've got a slow club trick in defense, it's guaranteed. Um, and you're gonna make this queen of hearts. Queen to next of hearts is a guaranteed trick because the jack's in dummy. Uh, Jack nines in dummy, I think it is. Um, so if you don't bid this lead directional three diamond bid, if you just compete in spades, partner might lead a spade, which gives the clearer a chance to take this spade finesse to throw their diamond loser away. Um, and if you look at the results around the event in the whole division, I believe Chuck and Fee were the only people to go off in five hearts, not because they've bid poorly. I mean, obviously doubling four spades would have been a positive. Once they bid three diamonds, I think the, the best thing they can do is double four spades. Um, 
Uh, but obviously, a lot of other people aren't bidding this um, this this diamond lead directional diamond bid. I don't know quite know what the auctions are going at, but I think it's a good bid. It's one of those bids that you know when you're competing, you need to give partner the best possible chance at either knowing when to compete or knowing what to lead if if you defend the hand. So, uh, well done to the player that bid three diamonds there. It won their team eleven imps. Um, so I'm sat out the last match as well, uh, which is fine. Um, I was here just as a reserve. Like, I might be fresh, but I'm not an established partnership with any of the four people playing, so I don't want to kind of butt in. So I think it was, um, and it's it's just nice for them not to feel pressured to sit out um, if they don't want to do it. Obviously, you need to be aware of maybe when you're playing badly, when you're tired and you need a break. Chucker had a break last night because he was, you know, he was fatigued after a day of play. Um, and we lost the second match of the day quite heavily. Uh, there were about three, probably more than three, but three clear boards where system at different tables done them in four maybe. There was one where they could open a four card major show a limit race so Chucker couldn't bid his diamonds. Diamond lead beats it, feet leather chump and it made. Oh. Then there were two weak now chump hands. One of them it goes a weak now chump, pass, pass, pass and Ali and Liam had game on, neither hand has a bid over weak no jump. They took it three off for 300, but they're making 630 and 3M. And then there was another weak no jump one, where it goes weak no jump, double, clear double. Uh, pass, 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 and they can keep it to seven, but it made nine for 580, you know, and obviously you're playing to beat it, you don't think doubling it and letting it make is gonna be a good board. Um, so that was a bad one. And then the last one is you're in, uh, you get to five diamonds on this hand. So this, this is a bit more interesting here. Um, so the bidding goes, uh, North opens one no trump. Um, south transfers to spades. And um, West comes in with three clubs. Now the vulnerability is um, uh, unfavorable. So North, South are vulnerable, East, West are not. So three clubs could just be, well, it could be many, many a hand. Um, goes pass, pass. So South backs in with three diamonds to show their second suit. Pass. North raises to four diamonds. South bids five diamonds. So it goes five diamonds, no double. Um, and you're in five diamonds and you've got to try and make it because obviously it's a vulnerable game. And the ace of clubs is led. Uh, and this goes small, small, new of it. So you're looking at things where you're going to lose a spade, definitely. And you're going to lose at least one heart. But it depends where the king of hearts is and so on. But there is a nice uh, way to play this. You can do a what's called a loser on loser play. So you cross to the uh, to a top diamond and play the queen of clubs, and you're just going to discard here. What you're going to do is discard a heart on the queen of clubs. It's a heart you would have possibly lost anyway. Um, but what that does is sets the jack of clubs up um, for another heart discard. So. You play the queen of clubs and throw a heart away. When they win, they switch to a heart. You win the ace and you play the jack of clubs, which isn't roughed, and you throw another heart away. So what you've effectively done is lost one club in place of maybe two hearts. And now it's just about not losing two spade tricks. So um, you now know your left-hand opponent has switched to a low heart, so they switch to the two of hearts. So left-hand opponent has three or four hearts. They have a stiff diamond because you cash another diamond and they show out. Um, and they have uh, seven clubs probably because the hand on your right uh, followed three times um, and count signals varies. I wasn't playing the hand. So it looks like the hand on your left has got one or two spades. Um, so the hand, that, sorry, the west hand um, and it depends what spades they are. Is it the queen? Is it the ace? Have a think about what you'd do, whether you'd run the jack or you'd play a spade to the king. What would you do? So Fee played a spade to the king, which I'm not saying is right, I'm not saying it's wrong. It didn't work, it lost to the ace. Uh, spade comes back to the queen. If you run the jack of spades, you would do that. And uh, so, we, so Fee went, ended up going two off. Uh, it went spade to the king, spade to the queen. Uh, spades the king and a spades the queen and a trump back and you're just a trick short from doing anything. Um, you can rough the hearts good and get one discard but you've still got a losing spade so. Uh, so it's difficult like how are you going to get this right and the issue is at the other table they are playing a weak and a trump so north opened one of a, a suit 
South Bidder Spade and West Bid Two clubs. And because West didn't preempt, they're much more likely to have some points now. Um, so they're more likely to have the Ace of Spades. On the auction I gave you, there's no guarantee that three clubs is constructive. It could just be preempted with lots of clubs, you know, rather than being four, you with three and you get in there. But two clubs is often constructive. If you've got a weekend with clubs, you would you would do it like a week jump over call. So it's just one of those. It's, I think it's a lot easier to get the spades right on the other auction, and that's what happened. So we lost 13 imps, and obviously we're losing double figure imps and all these other effectively system out hands. So all four of them thought they were playing well. It was just system unlucky. So they, they've gone back and sat in for the last match today. So it might look all doom and gloom. We've lost two matches today. However, um, we are on 58 VPs after six, which is only two VPs below average. There's one team fair in the, fair in the lead, but the rest of the teams that are there are thereabouts. Um, and we're playing a team one place above us. So if we can win that, we'll finish in the top half going into the second weekend, which is fine. Um, two years ago, we got promoted in first place, but after the first weekend, we were seventh out of eight. So it, it's, although you'd like to have uh, VPs on the board, it's not disastrous because it's such a long event and anyone can beat anyone that having one bad weekend isn't necessarily a, a, a foretelling of the, the whole event for you. So teammates are back for, well, one half of the team's back. Um, and uh, Chucker and Fee always seem to finish first. And they're the following hands. <laughs> they're the following hands. So um, no opposition bidding. Uh, so I'll just go through the bidding that these guys got to. And you can see there's 13 top tricks in any denomination. Well, uh, in a few denominations. Um, you can make seven diamonds, seven hearts, and seven N here. And so how do you bid it? So it's a bit difficult to find the jack of diamonds, as in ace jack to four diamonds. But there are other things you you need so how did these guys bid it well obviously they've got a much more sophisticated system than most they open two clubs with a strong hand um, it goes two diamonds which uh, they're going to do on most balanced hands uh, if you're going to do a positive over two clubs you probably want to have a dis bit of distribution like a six card suit or two five card suits or something so two diamonds is like a waiting bid it doesn't show not necessarily a negative uh, two hearts is cokish Uh, okay, uh, two uh, two hearts is either hearts or uh, some sort of strong balance stand. Two spades asks and three clubs from Chucker says I've got a single suited hand with hearts. This goes uh, three hearts confirming hearts. So it got to the point now. Obviously, there's about six bids to get to the point where they've bidden agreed hearts. Um, one hand shown a single suited hand. Now the other hand has bid three hearts, which is better than four hearts. So uh, they start Q bidding. They Q bid uh, four clubs, um, uh, then four diamonds, and then the hand with two aces takes over and bids four in. Okay, obviously partner, you've got two aces and partners open two clubs. At some point you're going to do that. And you can't Q four spades and you can't sign off. So you're kind of forced to bid four in. Now partner shows you've got all the key cards. Now what do you do? Well, you've got two, ace, two aces and four card support. So depending on what partner's got, You've got to invite Grand, I guess, um, because you know it's, it's going to be there some of the time. So you bid five ends, say, well, we've got everything. What, what do you think? And obviously, the the strong hand's got an extra queen of diamonds, an extra king of clubs, quite a lot of extra things that they haven't yet shown. And so, from the strong hand, what do you need to make seven hearts? You're probably not going to bid seven then. What do you need to make seven hearts? Well, you need a fourth diamond. Would do it. Uh, Ace queen to three clubs would do it. The king of spades would do it. Or queen jack of spades on a finesse so one combination of all of those things and you've got 13 tricks uh, one of them is a finesse but the rest of the time sometimes they's empty to four diamonds or might give you a choice and for all these situations you might even just have some squeeze opportunities if partners just got the queen of spades and four diamonds you might have some sort of squeeze on so they bid seven hearts and obviously it claimed it trick one um, when there's no rough so that was just a well bid hand obviously it's a bit very difficult without playing precision to find the jack of diamonds but um, odds on that you're more likely to make 13 than 12 so well bid teammates uh, so sometimes when the opponents go off the rails um, to capitalize you really need to um, make the most of it you need to be doubling them and you need to be taking the most tricks or putting them under pressure not just kind of cashing out for one off or something but fine you know getting 600 or 800 or something so I'm just going to give you fees hand um, and it's a lead problem so uh, I'll take your time so you've got queen 10 to 4 
10 to 3, 10 to 3, 10 to 3. One of the stellar hands you're used to. And your partner opens one club, and that is the last bid your side makes in the auction. The bidding goes one spade on your right, two forcing hearts on your left, three diamonds on your right, three N on your left. So it looks like at this point your right hand opponent's got diamonds and spades. Your left hand opponent's got hearts and a club stop. The right hand opponent pulls to four diamonds, pulls three into four diamonds, which should be forward going. The left hand bids key card. The right hand shows an auto three. The left hand bids six diamonds. And your partner whacks this. Pass, pass, pass. So, first thing first. Is this double a lightning double? Can it be possible that your partner wants you to lead a heart here? And this is maybe one of these table presence things. You might want to feel about how your opponents have been bidding this. Do they look reticent? Do they look, you know, so on. If you're on the side of the screen and the person who, you know, bid three enter play, um, can it be possible that your partner's roughing hearts here? Uh, obviously, if partner's got heart values, they're just going to make anyway. So the only reason to, you know, really do a lightning double for a heart lead is if you think things are going away or you think things are going to go rough. It feels like a complete misfit. So I think the first good decision for you made was to not lead a heart. Um, secondly, what should you lead? Well, your partner has opened a club. Um, it feels like partner's got some sort of weak, no chumpy, balanced hand or something. And if that's the case, you've got the spades stopped. You've got three diamonds. It could be right to lead a club, but partner's doubled. You know, one of the things, are they close to making this? It feels like if partner's doubling this just on strength, they've just bid something stupid. And Fee made an excellent lead of a diamond. So if you look at the whole hand, this was defended very tightly, um, and teammates picked up 500. So went a diamond lead, and uh, Chucker won the ace of diamonds and played a diamond back. Now Declare is struggling. Um, uh, Declare is struggling now. Did he go diamond to the king and ace? Yeah, diamond to the king and ace, diamond back. I mean, it's a bit better if Declare plays lower trick one, I guess. Um, because then you can win the second hand and dummy, but it went diamond king ace, diamond back, so they've already misplayed. Now they played the jack of clubs, it went small, they overtook this with the king, and Chucker ducked it, which is great. You've now just killed dummy. Because Fee still has a trump left, uh, they were able to um, rough the fourth heart. Is that right? Oh, just didn't have any tricks, yeah. So you can cash three hearts, and that's that's about it really you just get you know you're just dead the chump leader stopped any spade roughs uh the club duck has killed the club suit and the heart suit in the same go so even though you can go ace king queen and rougher you can go ace king queen and rougher heart to rough the heart's good you can never get back to them and you end up leading away from your spades at the end so uh, teammates got 500 when uh the corresponding table's just in a part score um, so it's two diamonds at one table and six diamonds at the other table. So we won the right side of that one. Well done, well done, Fee. Good lead, guys. Well defended, Chucker. All right, we're done for the weekend. Uh, we lost narrowly on the last match. We lost by six imps. So I think we're on something like 65 after seven. So we're like five VPs below average. How we've ha we had a good good weekend, everyone? Yeah. Really nice to see people. Really nice to play live bridge again. Uh, we'll be back in a few weeks for the second weekend. Uh, you'll see the legendary, the brilliant Chris Cooper. I believe we've got a team of five uh, fees in Australia, um, walking upside down or whatever you do down there. Uh, seeing family, I believe, Fee is Australian. And so we'll be a team of five at the most next time out. Um, but Cooper and I will probably be playing moderately throughout. We'll see how it goes. So um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the hands. Hope you've watched from the sidelines like I have and uh, we'll be back with another vlog next time out.